Good afternoon, everyone. I'm wondering whether we are in the correct meeting actually, because I think they recently changed the um, the meeting link again. Um, but it seems we're all here. I don't know if I'm going to quickly check the other link and see uh, uh, if there's more people there. Wait, I'll also post it here, but I'll come back in a sec. No one in the other link. So I think we can just use this one. Um, all right. Uh, I was just checking, is uh, the Hyperledger wiki down for uh, for you as well? Oh, let me check. Yeah, it's, it seems to not loud, so I think so. Okay. Well, then we're gonna do it with HackMD for the day. And I'll try to convert it to uh, uh, to the to the wiki uh, if it's back up again. Cool. I think we can get started. Uh, small crowd today. Um, wondering why that is. Um, but yeah, let's get started. Welcome to the Airstream Jazz Group working group call um, of June 29th. Um, you need to remember you to abide by the high pledge code of conduct and uh, uh, antitrust policy. Um, cool. Well, I recognize you all on the call, so I think we can spare the, the introductions. Feel free to add yourself to the attendees list if you wish so. Um, any status updates uh, people want to make? I think Clay showed the uh, uh, shared components and update to AFJ 040 has finally been merged, right? Uh, yep, it's finally merged and in in PyFold, and we are, uh, yeah, no, it's working great. A few hiccups, cut bugs, but nothing, no showstopper. So awesome work. Cool, that's great to work. Uh, to our uh, great to hear. Um, it's been a while, so happy that's finally uh, uh, over now and that it's working mostly uh, as it should. Cool. There, was there also a bifold call this week? Uh, no, no bifold this week. Okay. Cool. It's like a pie. Any uh, relevant updates from the Akapai call? I did not attend a Akapai meeting. Ah, okay. Yeah, me neither. Uh, okay. Um, then for the agenda for today, so the wiki was not online, so I couldn't look at like the, we had a long list of topics from last week that we in the end didn't uh, get to, but I know one was uh, focused on like the uh, zero for zero release. Now it has been, now that it has been released. Um, um, 
Clasio, you wanted to talk about the, the future um, of AFJ, right? Uh, yeah, I want to. I've had a few people reach out to me about Aries components and the state where all of them are. And I want to ask you, the community, about it. Okay, has anybody thought about it? How, how those other component components fit in? Um, and what is the vision for AFJ? Um, anyway. Cool. Yeah, I think we can uh, uh, cover that today. Um, any other topics we want to um, discuss if the people want to add to the to the agenda? Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Not an agenda item per se, but uh. I opened an issue to update the documentation for the storage config parameters, but I didn't quite know where to look for to do that completely. Uh, so if anyone wants to <laughs> point me to where that lives, I would be glad to do that. And so in, in the docs repo. Uh, sorry, issues. Ah. Yeah, so I, so I figured out how the in-memory database actually ended up working. Um, but this issue was for, to update that, because if you click on that link, it just has the, you know, like a, it takes a key and a random, random set of keys and values. Uh, so I, this issue is to update the documentation for that. Yeah. Okay. So you're mostly about in, interested in using the um, in-memory option, right? Well, yeah. No. So I figured that out. I was just uh, if you click on that link on the top. Uh, I was going. I, this, I, this is an issue I opened. I I, I'll, I can update this section right here. Uh, if someone can point me where that lives, like there's a Postgres section right for storage that has like a bunch of key values down there. And then there's some SQLite ones that aren't really uh, documented anywhere. So, th so the issue is an offer to update the storage config with the various backends um, so that it's not kind of uh, looking for various things all over the documentation. Yeah, makes sense. I think um, it's, I don't know, uh, may, maybe Ariel knows this, but like, is the storage object, it's different, is it different between Oscar and Indy SDK? Yeah, right? They are similar, but yeah, there, there are some different configurations. Both have the type, the type field where you set if it's a SQLite or if it's a Postgre. And also there are some other uh, parameters like, uh, for instance, with the timeouts and, and, and some, some other stuff, usually used on the Postgre, but, but yeah, it's a bit different. Right, yeah, so yeah, if, if I can do the documentation update if, if you guys will just point me to where the config options live uh, for reference, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and then we can probably add a section on both um, how to do it with in the SDK and with Oscar. Um, and then once we update the wallet API a bit more, we can uh, separate it a bit more between the two. Um, yeah, uh, Ariel, could you add some pointers on like uh, for the different options or? Okay, yeah, yeah, I will. I will add it to the to the issue. So. I can explain sure, yeah, no. how, it, how it works. Cool. Because, yeah, I'm glad to do the documentation. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, so, maybe as well, 
Timo, there is an issue that, that we encounter during the bifold wall. It's about the auto linking, uh, not link secret creation. Yeah, this one. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so issue is link sequence aren't created by default anymore. We expected that out of the wallet. So now you have to do the manly. Um, and a PR was created by Jason to automatically create it. Um, and we had some feedback rounds on it. I think there were two, yeah, two, two things to consider here, I think is, um, one, where do we create the link secret if we want to create it by default? Um, taking into account multi tenancy, um, maybe that you are not going to use AFJ as a holder. So then it wouldn't really be needed to create a link secret. Is it, well, does it matter if you have a link secret that you're not gonna use? I don't know. Um, and we also need to make sure um or maybe that's a consideration um like race conditions if we do it in a request credential call and you request two credentials at the same time then uh, they could both create a, a link secret for example um yeah any thoughts on this yeah so so from our perspective this was really about kind of the 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 usability from the dev perspective that is like we expected that that when we initialize the agent things would be ready um, i think where exactly is going to be initialized i don't think it's that important more of the expectation that when the agent is initialized it's fully initialized and ready to go okay um ariel you left some comments like do you think what what needs to be changed before we can merge this or no actually i, I was i was saying that 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 uh, you are, you are right about about this uh, issue on the on the multi tenancy uh, but if we are going to to add this logic to the credential uh, request or the first credential request for instance it will not be so, or, or I couldn't find a, a, a very straightforward way to to add it to the to the code in a in a clean way. One of the issues is what what you have mentioned recently today about the the, the race conditions that it, it's it's certainly possible, but also to, you know. We we will need to be calling to the Anon Creds API from the Anon Creds folder service or from the from the credential format service, which is a little bit weird from my perspective. So probably, probably we can we can keep it as as, as JSON implemented because it will be anyway a, an optional parameter. Maybe we can do it. Maybe we can do it uh, false by default if you want instead of yeah. being true. That and would so. Be a, where would we create it in that case? No, no, I mean in the we we can keep it as as JSON implemented now in the in the initialization. It will solve this. I mean it's it's simpler. Um, but in initialization, this this method is called uh, only once, right? Yes. So it won't work for multi tenancy. It will not work. Multi tenants. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I can I cannot find a, a, a solution to 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 be confronted to, 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 to uh, everybody, but uh, if we are going to do it in the in the credential request, we have this problem you mentioned about the race condition that it's possible. Not likely, but possible. Yeah, I think it's very unlikely so maybe we can go ahead 
with that approach? Um, I, I don't think it would be a race condition, right? It would be more just that you have to link secrets while you probably want one. Well, yes, but that, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's very true. That's true. So is, is that an, a, a little bit of an architecture problem? There is a, the system in an initialization, but there is no tenant initialization process for each component? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, sort of. We have um, okay. initialization of modules, but modules are more meant to be uh, global. So I think like this initialization is more if you need to set something up for your module in general that is not mm -hmm. related to a specific tenant. So for example, um, it is used by the Indie VDR module to connect to the ledger on agent startup, but like the, the ledger pools are shared by all tenants. So that is like not a tenant specific action. Um, we do have an agent initialization, um, but um, the uh, this is like a custom package, the Anocrats package. And so we don't have custom module initialization for each tenant. Um, so that is uh, a limitation, um, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we have implemented a workaround in Bifold. I guess it's it's just up for discussion. I don't think you don't have to accept it. So you we can leave it, let it simmer for a little bit and see where it goes. Uh, but others might have issues. So if there's a way to at least raise an error somewhere how identify and, and tell the user like hey this thing needs to happen yeah i think um it's weird that there um wasn't a um an error thrown because it should throw an error if we look at the um at the the code base um and we look at the anomcrats RS holder service and create credential request. Um, here it in here, it looks for a link secret ID if you want to use a custom link secret. Um, if not, it tries to find the default link secret. And if it does not find it, um, I it uh, throws this error. So um, are you, could it be that you're swallowing the error or that AFJ is maybe swallowing the error on some layer? Um, yeah, could be. Uh, I'll ask Jason about how, um, how this surface, I can get a little bit of more information about it. Yeah. Cool. I think um, we can maybe, like the race condition is a very, um, like very small chance. So um, I lost. Maybe it's fine to have that race condition. Um, um, or um, or yeah, we... but I'm not. I'm not quite sure if that is the intent that you have one link secret for all the tenants? Um, no, you will have a unique link secret per tenant. So the default link secret that is uh, being fetched here is for a specific agent context and the agent context is different for each, each tenant. So this will return a different value for based on which tenant you're currently interacting with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, 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 the bad thing about that is that we have we will need to implement that in both other services. I mean, in the Anon Creds RS and the in the SDK, and we have to make sure that we will not forget when implementing another. If 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 if, if we are going to uh, if implementing another another holder service.
Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so uh, if we implement in the older surface, we need to do it twice. I think, yeah, it's it's not the biggest uh, uh, change. So uh, um, having to implement it twice is, is probably fine for this. Um, yeah, so uh, based on this, what do, do we think would be the best approach here? Uh, I'd like to do it in the in the holder service, probably. But uh, I mean, it it it's a uh, it's a. Uh, I think it's the more straightforward way to do it right now. But um, I think we will need to find a way to to do what you put there about the initialization for an ancient context. Especially because we already have this issue on the mediation, and we will probably have it for other modules as well. In, a, in future modules, yeah. I mean. I think that's also my uh, my preferred way to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry, what do you mean by holder service? Is that live it in externalized? So it will be uh, uh, in here. So in here, instead of throwing an error, we'll just okay. I uh, no uh, credit or s hold their service. Okay, got it. Yeah, and then we'll do the same in the in the SDK uh, uh, holder surface. Okay. Um, have you thought about how we're gonna do the du duplication of the in the SDK? How is that gonna be communicated? Is that in the roadmap? What do you mean exactly? So when you say in the, in the SDK, I, I think about the the in the SDK REST library that we just went through for removing and replacing. Yeah. Um, is that what you mean? Are you talking about that old one? Or yeah. Is it a... okay. Yeah. So we still have here uh, because we didn't want to make it like you have to move over now, but. Uh, um, okay. Like allow for period, so we still have uh, support for the India SDK service, and that has um, the same uh, create credential requests. Um, it has the same check here, so we just have to do like the default okay. creation uh, two times. Is is the go to keep supporting or deprecate it? Or I think deprecate it as as soon as we can. I think we should keep it maybe in for one or two two versions more um, and then remove it uh, if it's not needed anymore. I think, yeah, it would, would be really nice if we can get rid of it sooner rather than later. Do, do, do we need to start adding some duplication markers or duplication warnings that this module is gonna be duplicated? That's a good one. Yeah, we have for um, new modules. We in the module we now have this warning. Um, this module is experimental and could have unexpected breaking changes when using this module. Um, so maybe we can add like similar warning, but more like this module is deprecated. Please migrate to this, and then we can add a link to the documentation. Yeah. Cool. Anything else on this issue? So just about checking. So right now it raises an error 
are, are you implying that instead of raising the error, we will auto create? Yeah. Okay. I think so. I, yeah, do we need an option for this? Uh, um, so you can choose whether to auto create it or yeah, I'm not too keen on adding more options. So if if the def if the default to is makes sense to create a link secret, then maybe we should just create it by default. Uh, but yeah, maybe we need to add an option for this. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's a it's a configuration option. Uh, you have to create link secret or something like that. The question is if it will be true by default or like like Jason did or if it will be false by default. Currently so in the in, in the when, SDK, in the, in the SDK, is it uh, automatically created the link secret or are we doing it manually? Or previously, we did I mean, manually. In, in, tree? in uh, we do, no, it's automatically created when you create the wallet. So the wallet, uh, when you created the wallet, we also created the, the link secret. Okay. And you had the option to, pass the link secret ID, because that is a use case we've heard, I think from the APSA team where they already yeah. had a, a link secret in the wallet. So um, then uh, it wouldn't be marked as the default in AFJ, but they did want to use that specific link secret ID. So if we, um, yeah, we need to look at a way how to, Yeah, how to make sure that still works. Um, yeah. Should that also okay. be an agent option then? Like the link secret ID you want to use or? No, I don't think it would be an agent option that. You can then just use, you can then send set out to create link secret to false and you can manually create the record and stuff probably. Yeah, because also you 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 can also specify uh, the link secret ID uh, on the on the holder services. I mean, for, 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 so you can also have a, you, you can al always have a, a way to specify your, your, your own ID for, for each flow. So maybe. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Um, then um, maybe we can talk about the future of AFJ or um, let me see. I also wanted to give a short demo of a, uh, uh, maybe we can do that now, is of a, a, a wallet we've been working on that's built on AFJ that's also open source. Um, let me see. So this is the repository. Um, and it's also published to the to the to Google Play Store and the App Stores. Um, and it's currently a very simple wallet. Um, it supports receiving credentials and sharing them. And um, it's fully built on OpenID for verified credentials. So it doesn't yet, um, um, we will extend it, but it doesn't yet support a uh, Ditko, Morano creds or any ledger at all. It's uh, fully, um, um, uh, it's based on DitWeb, DitKey, DitJWK, um, so no blockchain. And it also supports uh, JWT credentials. Um, I think, um, yeah, what I really like about it is that um, we, yeah, it's, it, it really shows that you can now also use AFJ to build stuff that is not necessarily high pledge ARIs or high pledge Indie or high pledge Anocrats, but you can also build, use it to build a um, open e for VC wallet where you still use the, 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 the core of the framework. Um, uh, for the crypto and the dits and, and everything. Um, so uh, 
um, yeah, the only um, we have um, uh, uh, in terms of, oh, it's not here, it's in the, uh, the apps. Uh, so we use um, um, RS Oscar for this one, but not in the VDR or Anacred Threads. So just uh, Oscar for the crypto and the storage. Um, and I can do a quick demo. Uh, let me grab my phone. Right. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Um, so this is one of the flows. Like it's 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 um, uh, part of a uh, Dutch uh, intro profile we're working on. That's based on OpenD for PC, and that's what we're also uh, have been working on with the Dutch Blockchain Coalition. Um, and so I can start off by uh, getting a credential. Um, and if you want, you can install the wallet from the stores and also uh, um, test it out. Um, I'll post the link here. Um, also the repo link here. There's all the links also. Um, so I fill in all my fields and uh, just for the demo purpose, normally this would be derived from somewhere else. Um, um, so once I have done that, I can uh, open my wallet. I already have quite some uh, in there um, and I can receive a credential um, with branding and the credential, the attributes we just had. Now it has been added to my wallet. Um, and the next thing I can do, I can now use this for um, several use cases, but one of them is signing in to the Dutch Blockchain Coalition website. Um, so I can scan on this QR code and I get a proof request and it says like, right, um, um, which uh, fields do you want to share? And under the hood, this uses the presentation exchange um, specification from um, this. Um, and so I can a request, I can accept it, it will be shared and then I'm signed in and you can now see I'm signed in as Timo. So I think, especially for cases where you do want to do sign in, um, the Open for VC stack provides a quite streamlined flow uh, because it's basically all auth and all that stuff, which is yeah being used primarily for authentication and stuff. Um, so yeah, um, as I said, open source, so feel free to, uh, uh, to run it yourself or modify it or build your own wallet with it if you would like. Um, yeah. Cool. Very nice. So did, did you manage to, to, to get it published on in the App Store in, in, in Apple? Because I have seen in your Twitter that you got rejected, uh, rejected because it was too similar to, to the Apple wallet. Yeah, we got rejected and then we um, um, published it like with like all the, uh, so uh, like all the previews we have, we removed those, then they accepted it. And then we tried, um, in the end, what did the trick is we removed the, uh, the title wallet here and we added a logo here. And I think that's what did it because if you look at the <laughs> uh, Apple wallet design, um, they have like the title ah. wallet here as well. And I think that was causing it to be very similar, but yeah, as you can see, it, it looks quite similar to, uh, uh, to the Apple <laughs> wallet, uh, uh, but I'm happy they accepted it in the end. Yeah, that's fine.
<laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Cool. Um, then, uh, next topic, future of AFJ. Um, do you um, have specific topics or like questions you want to start with, Glacio, or uh, do you want to share some slides or do you want me to go ahead and just start talking or how do you want to approach? I don't have any slides. So um, actually just answer one of the question. It was about Expo. So uh, that the wallet that you guys are creating, it, it seems to be was done using Expo, right? Um, so the question that I get, I get people reaching out to me on a fairly frequent basis asking about, oh, so there is a wallet, there is a bifold wallet, and, and there's a whole bunch of components in this AIRS ecosystem. Uh, which one should I go? Where do I go, right? Um, so of course we, we like AFJ and 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 the shared components and 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 the evolution that is that is happening, but it's also a whole other libraries out there. Um, so the question is: Is the goal for AFJ to remain JavaScript um, native in a way, although? There, there are a few native dependencies already, um, or is the go to to maybe facilitating the, the rapid development that maybe was having issues with in the SDK and, and some other stuff under the hood. Um, I understand there is a flexibility to enabling that fast development in, in the JavaScript side. It's, it's easier, potentially cheaper to develop. Um, but where we're struggling is that consistency in the in the ecosystem across different implementations. Um, is there an opportunity to to start um, moving as, as maybe VCX matured, then AFJ just leveraged that, or did calm? I know stabilizes, and there is. Leverage of the didcom from from diff. Uh, there's a Rust implementation or something like that. Um, I'm just trying to understand a little bit where where do you think the project is going to go, or or where's the vision for now, and what do you think about the things, the other things that are at play, and that's a Good question. Um, anyone that that wants to has has some thought on this already, or All right? Then uh, I'll I'll give it a shot. Um, so I think yeah, one of the things you mentioned is like um, having. A lot of it's implemented in, in TypeScript, JavaScript allows for quite flexible um, development, um, which I think is nice. Like there are maybe some downsides to using JavaScript and, and some things that you maybe wouldn't have if you implement it in Rust. I think from probably like in the end, you can run it in more, expose it to more languages if you write it in, in, in something like Rust. Um, that you can write wrappers um, and the performance um, probably also better if you write it in Rust. Um, so I think there's something to say for it. I am less fan of having a lot of it implemented in a, another language because then it becomes complexer if you want to do, uh, you either need to have a very minimal API exposed in the wrapper, um, or you have a very advanced API, but that means the wrapper layer becomes really complex. And um, I think also FFI has quite some performance impact. So then you also lose a lot um, of the advantages of having a fast language like Rust, for example. Um, so then I would rather 
say you you move mostly to um, another language. Um, but I think in terms of future of AFJ, I think we probably want to like add more features to make it more suitable for I think a server environments. That's something we're really interested in now. It has been used a lot in um, mobile environments, but we're now starting to use it in 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 server environments and want to actually start using it on a large scale, like having managing uh, hundreds of thousands of wallets in an agent. Um, and um, so there's definitely work to be done there because like we now have multi-tenancy and, and, but like there's definitely components that are going to break on that scale. Um, and um, I think making it more modular and maybe extracting some stuff, like there's a lot of code in the framework, which also adds complexity. So um, I think, um uh parent has lately done some great work on on like writing some um smaller libraries uh let me see if i can find them here um yeah so like implementing uh selective disclosure um uh jobs and implementing uh dits in um typescript so as like yeah more very uh, scoped libraries, which uh, allow you to parse a DIT, create a DIT document and, and, and have the validation in there. Um, and I also asked Piran to, to give a presentation on that um, in the next few weeks. I think, yeah, so extracting more code over time out of the framework and making them general purpose TypeScript libraries is um, more of the direction I would see it going than moving stuff to um, Rust, for example, um, and having it in another um, language. Because I think with that, we could remove um, some complexity from the framework itself. We could make it usable um, for other libraries. For example, you have the Verano framework. And if there's like general purpose libraries that we can create, we can share some, some um, code between those frameworks as well. Um, and the framework AFJ really becomes more of the glue that glues together the different libraries. So if you want to use DITs with STJOTS, um, AFJ would depend on both of these libraries and make sure they work nicely together instead of you having to write the glue between those different um, libraries. But you can all, always directly depend on it. Um, yeah. I think that's where I see it mostly going. I don't know if people have, have, have things to add or like thoughts with this. Okay. Well, I think you can, yeah, there is a, there is a um, uh, remaining discussion about the, about moving on to the Open Wallet Foundation, right? You asked me about my opinion about that last week, but you didn't respond, <laughs> so. Yeah, sorry, I, I've i been really busy with, uh, 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 we had deadlines for this wallet uh, this week, so I, uh, uh, I abandoned yeah, yeah, all right. of my I other. Know, uh... But but, but so, I think, I, I think that that's some. So Something I'm so sorry, uh, uh, Something I'm I'm thinking is that uh, now that there are some other some other libraries also written in in, in JavaScript or TypeScript like uh, Veramo, what's the different? What what would be a shape position uh, against those other libraries that also somehow? serve for the same purposes uh, because you know with Veramo you can also uh, deal with uh, deeds and VCs, or maybe not an uncrest but this is in general uh, and also do some did come and, and and implement some custom protocols as well so um, maybe if we are thinking or, or moving towards the 
the open id uh, for vcs approach i mean if we are going to support different different uh, transports and we are moving to the open wallet foundation maybe that could that that could be an opportunity for uh, afj to become a more generic or more general ssi framework like we mentioned some weeks ago. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, Clasio, you also wanted to say something. Um, just want to share like this document. Um, I'm trying to figure it out and get confused with all those government acronyms. So is this Dutch government? Yeah, yeah. I think I shared this with uh, John uh, last week. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and, and, and I've seen this question over and over again about uh, the, the, again, mobile development is like, oh, do we go native? Do we use something else, right? Um, and, and for me, it's less of what is the language that is developed, but it's more of like, okay, what can I build on top of it? So if it is a React Native and, 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 Java, and JavaScript and provide SDK, um, I'm not concerned about how purist that implementation is, as long as it's working and I can work in, in the language that I chose for whatever reason, that's fine. Um, I think one of the things that they make, it's about this kind of a cross-platform compilation and they mentioned uh, uh, PhoneGap and React Native and Flutter and those things come and go. Um, so, so it becomes less, less agnostic. So that's, that's, my, that's my concern and, 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 and my point about it. Um, but that's fine if the intention is to to remain that kind of a, a more closer to node development and node language as well. That's that's understandable. That's a direction that the project want to go. Um, but I just also want to raise that in the scenario, some some wallet would automatically get uh, some government automatically exclude this this framework uh, right from the get go. Um, so, so it depends where, where you want to go. So, so I'm, I, as I said, I've had people reach out and asking to me about integrating existing applications into their, uh, adding verifiable credential or, or a did com features into a app, an existing app, um, existing app are not necessarily written in react native. It could be written in native code. Um, and, and that hasn't been that smooth for what I understand. Um, so, so it's just a question for the community where, where, where they want to go. I mean, there's no right or wrong. It's just, where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I think. So, so I guess the, 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 main, the, main, the main topic is, do you want to remain as a Aries JavaScript framework, or it's more of, um, I don't know if, if I can compare, for instance, to uh, AWS SDKs that behind the scenes they call executables, do whatever it is that needs to do um, that is compatible with, with, with some interface, right? So it doesn't, it's not necessarily fully uh, implemented, although there's some sometimes code duplication. Um, which is fine. Um, coding duplication is not all bad, but it's just, I just want to ask the question. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think first off, I think there's a lot of like assumptions in this document that I don't agree with. I think their take on, uh, on cross-platform development and then all these things, um, I don't think they're the right assumptions they're making. Um, um, but uh, that aside, I think it is an issue that like you can't build natively in iOS and Android easily with this stack. Um, 
question is always like in the end um do we need a single implementation um for all use cases um or not um i think um having it implemented in rust can work i know for example like the you have the spruce id libraries which are um i think they have yeah the did kit um which is written in um rust and i think it exposes um um uh, they expose it to a lot of different languages, um, which is nice and allows you to build an iOS and Android and in Flutter. And I think Rick Native was on their roadmap maybe. Um, so I think, yeah, that's, that's something that would work in this case. Um, but I think it can also sometimes add a lot of complexity if you want to have the same thing working in all environments. Um, and if you look at like a, a lot of libraries are just like, if you look at JWT libraries, um, they're often now just implemented in every language again. Um, and the question is like, over time, I think more and more libraries will come available for this. Like you have more DIT libraries, more um, JWT, SDJOT libraries, uh, VC libraries. And then, um, yeah, uh, if we also get that for, um, Kotlin, um, because I know a lot of people are now working on, on, on Kotlin or SDJOT libraries, VC libraries. And if we then also get that for Swift, for example, then, um, it would become a bit more like you now have with development where if you're going to make a, a mobile app, uh, you often have like different dependencies to achieve the same thing, which isn't always the easiest. Uh, but yeah, uh, so. I don't know if that answers your question. It's not a very concrete answer, um, but I would say it is a problem, but I don't think it's a problem for AFJ to solve. Nope. That's fair. Yeah. So it also depends really on like we, when we build wallets, we, for now, like we've always been in the, um, in the uh, situation where we can choose React Native or we start from scratch and then we choose React Native. So like it hasn't been a limitation for us. And I, there would be not a lot of cases where I would go with writing two wallets in iOS and Android uh, separate, um, I think um separate from having to do it two times i think there's a lot of complexities in building native applications that are just abstracted away for example with with expo um um yeah but that's also my personal opinion and we're a small team so uh yeah different um considerations to make i think charles you you wanted to say something oh no i didn't want to say anything particular um i, I kind of agree with the glue the glue comment the glue uh, path seems like a good one um the reason the reason i was this is a beginner comment uh, the reason i was attracted to the aries javascript framework was for uh the chance to do rapid prototyping uh, in react native um and then if the idea plays out maybe making that decision to re-implement or or you know adjust from the framework uh, from there but but that seems like a goal that 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 is a <laughs> that that draws people people seem interested in when i talk to them about it about oh it's in react native we can do it really quickly um that kind of thing so that, that was my only uh comment on the issue yeah that makes sense I think something that, that might be worth investigating in the far, far future would be just uh, instead of anything with FFI, because what you mentioned is there are performance drops in FFI and there are small use cases where like 
calling something over FFI to Rust is actually faster. Uh, implementing it in, in, in TypeScript a lot of times is faster than going over FFI. Um, but looking at WebAssembly uh, would take a lot of those things away. You don't have to deal with unsafe FFI wrappers. Um, you have a unified interface. It is It works very well. It compiles to WebAssembly. You can reuse it within Node.js browser and, well, very sketchily React Native right now. Um, and I think if at some point React Native themselves would support WebAssembly, um, then that would open up like, I think a lot um, because then we can, well, we, we do get some performance back for using a, a WebAssembly or a Rust library compiled to WebAssembly. And we would be able to reuse it because right now we, what we did with shared components, we have to re-implement it in Rust and we are re-implemented in, uh, or sorry, uh, Node.js, FFI, and also in React Native for their specific turbo modules, which is a bit of a, or was a bit of a pain and will be a pain for maintenance. And my preference from that experience will always go to, if it's possible to implement in TypeScript, implement in TypeScript, if you're gonna use it in TypeScript. Um, also, I think if we have like the shared components right now with, if there is an issue specifically for AFJ, there are not a lot of people in our AFJ group that could pick those issues up. So if we heavily rely on uh, Kotlin or, or Swift libraries, for example, to, to get the job done and to get the end product, uh, then the end product works. But if there is a small issue, um, yeah, there are probably a lot of people that in our team that could just fix those issues because we our experience is not that, uh, in those languages. Um, so from a maintenance perspective, I think it's, yeah, quite important to, if it's possible to, to stick to TypeScript, um, because that's where we are experts in and that's what we can maintain. Yeah, makes sense. Do you know uh, on the performance trade-offs between uh, WebAssembly and FFI? Um, yeah, I think it depends on the exact thing you want to run because there are a lot of benchmarks like comparing pure Node.js, FFI and WebAssembly with just running like Fibonacci, calculate the 1000s number, which is like they're completely useless benchmarks. Um, I So I'm, I'm not 100% sure, uh, but I do know that, that working over WebAssembly and working over FFI uh, working over WebAssembly is a lot easier, especially with libraries like Wasm Bind Gen, which just generate complete TypeScript interfaces for you um, to call uh, those WebAssembly libraries. And with FFI now, we, we did it together and it's, it's, it's a lot of manual labor and you have to align certain structures because they're aligned in C. So if you like, if your property is in the second place instead of the first place in the class, then it won't work. And like tools like Wasn't Bindgen, they just take those complexities away, which yeah. is so nice. But yeah, I, I would be very hesitant to, to use WebAssembly right now for React Native. I, I think you, you send it once on Slack that there's, there is an implementation working of WebAssembly in React Native. And I think I also once got some functions to run, but very minimal. Um, but yeah, I, I think if we want to support WebAssembly, it will be if React Native themselves implement it, because then you know you have some support. It will be a lot more stable. Well, we can hope for it to be more stable, I guess. Um, but yeah, so it's probably in the far future, I guess. Cool. Okay, makes sense. Um, we're out of time um so yeah i think we can uh close it off uh for today um if you have a topic you would like to discuss next week uh please let me know um i think there's some topics left hanging from last discussion so once the wiki is back online i'll make sure to get them out and we can continue that discussion uh next week cool thanks everyone thank you everyone thank you Bye-bye.